I would say my purpose in life, at least from my perspective, would be to help show other people their purpose, help show other people their capabilities, help show other people their human potential. Kyle's life, I believe, he was sent here for a reason. He may look disabled, but he's not. And that's inspiring. I don't give up easily on things. Every excuse that we make keeps us away from the things that we want the most out of life. It is that attitude which has brought 25-year-old Kyle Maynard to Tanzania. I'm like hyperventilating right now. I'm, uh... To attempt something that at first glance makes him seem delusional. Kyle Maynard wants to climb to the 19,431-foot peak of Mount Kilimanjaro. When I first heard it, uh, I thought it was a joke. It's his goal to you know, show the world that you can achieve any goal that you want. Kyle's always had crazy dreams like that, and but he goes out and he does them. At home in Georgia, Kyle has long been defying expectations and taking care of his own needs, all unimaginable 25 years ago. The day Kyle was born was, um, well, obviously it was traumatic. The doctors whisked him away in a towel, covered him up, whisked him away. And they came back to the room and kind of just, they said there's some problems. The name of the condition that I was born with is called um, congenital amputation. For me, for all four limbs to be affected, um, that's a pretty rare thing. We would just put things in front of him and help him figure it out without, you know, trying to do it for him. My dad said that the world was not going to be tailored for my every need. So that's why he knew that I had to go and find a way to go and do it on my own. I was there with him in the sandbox as he picked up a shovel and was trying to figure out how to dump sand on me. <laughs> I never really realized Kyle was different. I just, I've always looked at Kyle as a normal big brother. But unlike his family, strangers, we're not always so accepting. I remember the feeling as a kid where it really affected me. The stares and the looks. I remember sitting in bed and sometimes I would just cry myself to sleep thinking about would I ever be able to have um, a normal you know, girlfriend someday or a wife or kids or a normal job, a normal career, and just a lot of fear about what the future would, would bring. In Tanzania, Kyle's immediate future will require him to hike some 38 total miles while on the mountain. The one fear that I have is just paying attention enough to, to my body to know the difference between um, you know, when I can push through something and when something might really be dangerous. January 4th, 2012. Kyle's Mission Kilimanjaro begins. Over the first four days, Kyle proves to be adept at climbing. Feeling great. Feeling really good. It's uh, being more upright, more vertical. And it takes pressure off my arms. But the flat and downhill portions of the trail are taxing his arms to the breaking point and crushing his will. At the end of the day, when we came and strolled into camp, I was pretty wiped. Never really done anything like this, and it's just pushing me to the brink. And... <sighs> Kyle pushed himself to achieve back in sixth grade when he joined the wrestling team. Yet initially, he was fearful and lost his first 35 matches. The realization that I had in the, the, the first match in breaking through was, it was just that my opponent was just as afraid as I was, or more. If he was afraid, then I didn't have to be. When he was losing, he 
it was hard on his, you know, self-esteem and confidence, but as he started to win, he really started to, to become that Kyle that we know today. By high school, Kyle had become a wrestling champ. He wrote a book in 2005 and on nationwide TV became a poster guy for upbeat perseverance. He would leave the University of Georgia to become a motivational speaker. My message is a pretty simple one. It is to make no excuses. But much of the time, Something Kyle says, he felt like a fraud. I learned more than anything else. I would be happy for that 45 minutes that I was on stage speaking, and then for the other 23 hours and 15 minutes of the day, then it was, you know, a lot of it I felt depressed. I'm supposed to be trying to teach other people how to get their life together, and I can't even pull my own together. Then in 2006, while Kyle was at a DC airport en route to a speaking engagement, two servicemen who'd seen him on TV spoke with him. They were MPs who'd suffered extensive, severe burns while in Iraq. And they told me that they laid in a hospital bed for a week after they had been ambushed. They made a suicide pact with each other. And they said that on the day they made that decision, they happened to see my story and they said that's what got him to stop. It was a conversation that would change the course of Kyle's life. I held it together uh, while I was talking to him and came back to the hotel that night and just cried for hours. I think about those guys almost every day. So, as part of his commitment ever since to the veteran community, Kyle and his team have decided to honor a fallen soldier by carrying his ashes up the mountainside. Six years after his airport encounter, Kyle is facing another crisis. The end of day five brings evidence that Kyle is badly hurting. Group leader Kevin Chirilla offers a plan. You like curveballs? I like curveballs. Right. We just head straight up the mountain instead of going down. Is exactly. That that? Really? Is that a possibility? Yeah. Hell yeah. It's a new, daring route. Shorter, yes, but far steeper and more dangerous. The Western Breach, where in 2006, three climbers were killed. It's steep, and there's a lot of big pull-ups, and there's no spot to put a tent if we need to, to push a team of nine plus all the porters up over the western breach, it's a big risk. If we commit to this, we have to commit to it. I know I can do it. I, I mean, I know for a fact. Day nine, before dawn, the western breach awaits Kyle as loose rocks make avalanches a deadly threat, and he struggles just to keep from sliding. As chains are attached to Kyle's feet, it is as if a lifetime of determination and effort can be seen in his every move. He has gone from 16,200 feet to 18,500 feet. Day nine ends with the summit in reach and Kyle pondering a lesson that the mountain has taught him. Most frustrated I got the whole day was when I would just go and, and, and look up and see like how far I'd have to go instead of looking back and seeing how far we'd come. I think I do that a lot in life and just in general. Just one step at a time. Before the final push, Kyle is given the honor of carrying the fallen soldier's ashes. As the sun rises once more, Kyle trudges forward again and again, not just for himself, but to show others that they too can find a way to the top. We did it. Woo! Woo! Yeah. All right, all right.
Did it, baby. Did it. <laughs> First in the world to crawl up Kilimanjaro, Kyle. At the peak, Kyle prepares to pour out the ashes of the fallen soldier. Carrying you to the top of the mountain today meant a tremendous amount to me. It's an honor to be able to, to bring you here, brother. Mission Kilimanjaro, Kyle Maynard's mission, is a success, a tribute to those who inspired him, to those who always believed in him, and to all those who still yearn for belief and inspiration and triumph. I hope that if there's a handful of people that experience that desire to do something greater in their life because of this, then it's worth it.